everybody and welcome to my very first Halloween video of the season. I am so excited about this project because we are going to throw in some glow-in-the-dark elements and some glitter. My plan for this project is to make a white jumper dress with little ghosts along the bottom that are covered in this magical glow-in-the-dark glitter by Glitter Hippo. By the way, this video is not in any way sponsored by Glitter Hippo or anyone else for that matter. You are probably also forced to watch an advertisement before you were able to watch my video and well, I'm also not paid for that, unfortunately. I am literally just here for fun. Now because my little glitter ghosts aren't going to be machine washable friendly, I'm going to put Velcro on the back of each of them and then I will also put a small piece of Velcro onto the skirt of the dress. That way I can take the ghosts on and off at will. So let's get started. For this jumper dress project, you will need some Glitter Hippo Glow in the Dark Glitter, some sew on Velcro, two packages of felt ghosts from the Dollar Tree, which looks like this when you punch out all of the little pieces. You'll need some Mod Podge or other clear gluey thingy, a paper plate to put your gluey thingy on, and a paintbrush. And for fabric, I will just be using this thrifted white bed sheet and basic sewing supplies. I laid out some paper and then I put all of my little ghosts onto the paper and I punched out their faces, which sounds very aggressive, but I promise it wasn't. Personally, I'm not sure if I'm a big fan of the three punch outs on the bottom of the ghost. I kind of like it like this. Now, if you see my last video, you'll know that I made some color changing hair clips and I kind of use the same process. I had mixed some glitter in with some Mod Podge and then I painted them onto the fabric flowers. But this time I decided to pre-paint the ghost with a layer to soak into the felt. That way my glitter Mod Podge mixture wouldn't soak in and it would sit on top of the ghost. Really, I'm not even sure if this made that big of a difference. I do know that it took double the time to paint them though. I've mixed up about half of the glitter into a big pile of Mod Podge and I just realized I have no idea if this is actually gonna glow in the dark once it's mixed with the Mod Podge. But yeah, I guess I probably should have done like a test swatch or something first, but I'm just going to um, paint all of the ghosts at this point and hopefully it works. <laughs> I have painted one ghost with the glitter Mod Podge solution. You can see it's a little lumpy in some areas. It's pretty thick. I don't know. I mean, that could be like six layers of glitter or it might only be like two layers of glitter. So I don't know. I feel like I should have tested this before doing all of the ghosts. At this point, I ended up adding more Mod Podge to my glitter solution and watering it down a little or thinning it out just so I could conserve all my glitter and so that I could see if it would glow well with less glitter. You can see it doesn't sparkle as much compared to this one. Definitely a difference, but I think for the rest of them, I am going to go this route just because it's going to conserve on the glitter Mod Podge solution. Here you can see ghost number one on the top and ghost number two on the bottom of the plate, just in a different light source. So at this point, it was about 2 a.m. I let my ghosts dry overnight, and then the next morning I brought them out into the sun so I could charge them up and watch them glow. Now at this point, I still wasn't 100% sure if it was going to work. I didn't know if they were going to glow, but they did. Here you can see I was kind of walking into the darkened hall hallway and then here I'm in the dark part of the bathroom. Uh, you can see that the ghost number one glows really well on the left whereas ghost number two doesn't glow as well. I think it's just because he didn't have as many layers of glitter. You can see on the bottom of his little skirt or his little sheet or just the bottom of the ghost I guess um, I had done a thicker layer of glitter and it does glow a lot more. You can also see around his face he's glowing a bit more because I had left the glitter solution a little more chunky. So if you plan on making this project I definitely recommend using more glitter than not. Ghost number two on the right does glow. It's just hard to see because the one on the left is glowing so much. At this point, all of my ghosts had been painted and they had all dried, so I brought them out into the sun to charge them up, and they all look really, really good. You can see ghost number one is the second one in on the bottom. He definitely glows the most, but they all look really good. I have all this paper left over from what the ghosts were drying on, and there's a bunch of glitter on it, so I'm gonna charge it up and then take it in the dark. Also, I'm wearing my glow-in-the-dark shirt. I thought it was kind of fitting, so we'll also see that glow. It's kind of hard to tell because like the there's still a window in here, but I shut the door. There's my little shirt and there's all the glitter paper. It shows up better in person and on pictures than it does on video. Let me take a picture real quick and I'll show you. So here are the pictures and mind you, it looks even better in person, but this glitter has the most beautiful blue glow, even though it's a completely white looking glitter in real life. For the Penafor dress, I just cut out these basic shapes, which are pretty much just rectangles and I sewed them all together. This wasn't as quick as this time lapse, but it was also a pretty quick project. So the Penafor dress is done. It could probably use like a hook and eye closure, but that's pretty much it. Um, do I love it? 
No. This is probably why I've never actually made a pinafore dress before. It looks like an apron. I also just, I don't like how it sits. Maybe the straps are too thick. I don't know. But it came out well enough, so it is what it is. Now my plan was to use Velcro on this dress so that it could be machine washable. I was going to put the sticky hook parts on the ghost and then the soft parts on the dress. That way it wouldn't hook on anything while it was in the washing machine. But what, what, what is this Velcro? I have never seen this in my life. I didn't thrift this Velcro. I actually bought it brand new and it doesn't have hooks. This is basically the placement I used for the ghost. And to make sure everything would line up perfectly, I sewed the soft part onto the dress. Then I put the hooky but not actually hooky part onto that piece of Velcro. Hot glued it and then stuck the ghost on top. Also, I found out this Velcro is new. It says right on the box. I've been thinking about myself today Thinking how I've changed how I really don't care if you are here or if you don't stay Now I'm feeling those winter blues But I don't want to cry Cause all we ever do is laugh it off and I'm sick and I don't know why also, please keep in mind how amazing this skirt actually looks in pictures and in real life. I still have a 12 pack of ghosts and I still have this glow in the dark pink glitter. So should I make another set so that they're interchangeable and there can be pink and blue on the skirt? 